Hey, welcome to my furnace or uh, laundry room slash storage closet slash utility room um, slash Starlink uh, Starlink power block low storage location. Uh, wanted to address some lightning issues possibly. Uh, we haven't had much of, of a lightning storm yet this year, but I wanted to set up some sort of lightning protection for the Starlink. Uh, connection uh, is kind of a concern of mine overall uh, but one thing that Starlink does provide in the FAC on their website uh, it says I live in an area with lightning lightning can I still use Starlink and then their answer is Starlink meets the US National Electric Code grounding requirements and includes the necessary lightning protection however any user who lives in an area with lightning should have the appropriate lightning protection installed in accordance with your local electrical code prior to using Starlink well I've been using Starlink for five four or five months now haven't had any lightning protection installed uh, but I'm gonna get that done today at least some sort of protection for now so I'm not gonna worry about up on the dish grounding the rod or the grounding the, the Starlink up on the roof. Uh, according to what they say, it says Starlink meets an NEC grounding requirements and includes necessary lightning protection. So to protect against some lightning, I'm not gonna really worry about at this point the actual Starlink up on the roof. Uh, I'll worry about more on the internal stuff. According to them, the Starlink meets NEC requirements as far as lightning protection goes and grounding. Uh, and I imagine through the power block that's up in here powering the whole system probably grounded through there so I want to provide some sort of protection between the power block of the Starlink system to my electronics or my in-house router and uh, network switch and so on and so forth so I want to get I, I picked up a I went to ispsupplies.com and I ordered a surge protector I saw this on another website too or another YouTube channel uh, it's the Perfect Vision XCAT Surge Surge Protector, and it comes like this. Uh, I believe it is some sort of weather exterior rated, but I'm going to install it interior uh, in the in in the interior here. Uh, and all it is is it's a plug for the Cat Five or uh, Six or Five E or Six goes in one side, and then you go back out the other. And I do believe it actually carries power as well if you need to. So let me get my screwdriver, take the cover off, and all it is is just input, output, and then a grounding post right there. Simple enough, and then there's, I don't even know what those things are, tubes or something. So it, it's, it talks about gas tubes, uh, but I'm going to install it up on one of my floor joists here. I've got a ground cable already run outside to my main grounding post outside and we'll get it installed. Uh, get it hooked up and see if I still have internet after I'm done. Alright so the power block for dish E is right here and here's the surge protector got my ground wire connected to earth outside coming in and that's got to be connected to this post right here so I'm going to install this guy right away here easy access right on this joist that way I can run that wire in there and it should be good to go so I've got some screws drop it good old drywall screws doesn't need too much alright now I'm going to cut my ground wire about where I need it to be, something like that. 
I'm not an expert by any means. Do my research. This is 10 gauge grounding wire. And we'll put a little curve into it to wrap around that post. Ready? Loosen the post up. There we go. Didn't bring a socket. I do have pliers. And I turned the flash on my phone on so you can see it better. Alright, that's tight. Alright, I'm going to do a speed test before I unhook and plug things in. Alright, let's do a speed test to make before we install the surge protector in the system to make sure we have decent internet high quality recording here a nice ping 33 milliseconds and good speeds too two fifty three I just did one there and I just got before on this exact server and I got 140 or 140 or 160 and I remember which one it was. So we got decent speeds now so we'll go install the surge protector and see what happens. Alright when you're using Starlink from the power from the, the dish down to the power block you got to use the supplied 100 foot cable and then that's got power that goes from the power block out to the dish and that's why it's bigger and you got to use it. But from the power block to your the router, you can use any any Ethernet cable that you want. I build my own Cat 5e that runs from this location into the furnace room where our, the router sits and the network switch is sitting. But uh, I'm going to unplug that cable here and run it up inside. And do it on the left side on the surge protector all right and then I'm gonna take this another short cable that I have kit 5 should use my own but I'm not I'm gonna run from the dish side to the power block side and then run it up into the surge protector now I don't know there wasn't much for documentation out there for the, this thing. Uh, so I don't know if there's a in or out. Uh, looks like that light came up. All right, let's install the cover back on. Of course, I'll have to screw down below. While the router is booting. So that's done. I had the power block. Now the router's booting up right now, so once that's done, we'll jump back over by the computer and check speeds. Alright, the PC says it's reconnected. I see my Wi Fi is up. Alright, check the speeds again. Looks like no issues. That ping is normal. It's a higher speed, so typically when I get higher speeds, I get a, a higher ping too. 23 millisecond ping 24 millisecond 
and we're going to be just over 200 I imagine, 250, 260 even more, maybe I get up to 300, 294 with a 24 millisecond ping, that's not bad at all so looking good all right, so that's a success. We've got the surge protector installed for Starlink. Now this again, this is the Perfect Vision XCAT surge. And this is the box it came. I picked it up from ispsupplies.com. I'll put the link in the description of where I got it from in case you're interested. It's gotta be grounded. I'm sure you probably could get away with one of those. I think they make power strips that are, are surge protectors as well, but I, I figured I didn't really need that. I just needed this. Um, I should put a power strip on the power cable too and never think about it. Anyways, so that little peace of mind for me at least, just to, you know, just to protect our systems in the house, make sure that there's no issues with a uh, lightning strike on the actual pole. I doubt that'll ever happen, but you never know. I've got such big tall trees around me and that, you know, who knows if that would protect me a little bit. We don't really get that many close lightning strikes even though we do get thunderstorms. Uh, but knock on wood, you never know when that might happen. So I hope that ho this helps anybody else who might be having Starlink and maybe worried about it lightning or having an install on top of a roof and perhaps need to protect against lightning. There are options for surge protectors out there. Another option I've seen other people talk about is grounding the actual pole up on the roof based on NEC uh, standards for uh, like a television mast or something like that. I'm not going to do that right now. According to the fact, the FAQ from Starlink, the, the system is protect against lightning and, and meets basic requirements for lightning protection and grounding requirements. So I'm not going to go and ground the actual mast. It'd actually be a little bit more of an undertaking to get that grounded. I could do it. I've got ideas running down in the attic and then down through the uh, soffit on the side of the house, down the side of the house, and then pounding in a new grounding rod because there is no grounding rods in that side of the house. That's that. It's good peace of mind for uh, if the storm rolls in and we have lightning, I feel a little bit better about perhaps a lightning strike. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below. Uh, the thumbs up and the comments um, help out the channel a lot, help out the video, get it moving a little faster, get pe get it in front of other people's eyes. Uh, it helps, helps the channel out too. So uh, if you like the video, give it a little thumbs up and leave a comment below. And uh, if you like what, I, what, you, what I've been doing on this channel, subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll see some more stuff. May have some more stuff about Starlink in the future, who knows. Uh, I've got the edition going on here in the net, or not the edition, the kitchen remodel. We're working through and... Um, Keep doing some firewood stuff too, tractor things. I think I got a hundred hour service coming up on the tractor, so I might do a review on that too. Um, but that's it. So thanks again, and we'll chat on the next one. Adios. Thank you. Bye bye.